So we know that light acts as a wave and that matter has particles. Or does it? <laughs> Hey, my name is Justin and welcome to the Avendano Effect. So, we know that light acts as a wave because of multiple experiments, just like the double slit experiment, where we saw a light source through two slits and it created this diffraction pattern at the end. But a few scientists started to question, what if light acted like a particle? And this whole fiasco started what we could now call as quantum mechanics. This whole hypothesis of light behaving like a particle started because of a single event called the ultraviolet catastrophe. And it really was one. Think of this, we know that all things radiate heat and energy from the whole electromagnetic spectrum. The best way to explain this is through a black body, which is a physicist's idealized object that radiates energy and takes it all the light and does not reflect it back. Just think of the color Vanta Black that we all know and we've seen in YouTube, just like this. It absorbs 99% of all light and does not reflect 99% of it back. That's what a black body is. So, physicists use something like this in experiments to see how light would react in the real world. They hypothesize that as we increase the frequency, the intensity of the radiation it emits increases. We call this the Rayleigh Jeans Law. But at a certain point, which at which the bigger frequencies would reach, it started to slope down, exactly on the ultraviolet light. The higher the peak, the higher the temperature, because we know that as we increase frequency, we increase the kinetic energy, which turns into heat. But there wasn't supposed to be a peak. That intrigued scientists so much because it could not be explained by classical physics. More so, the Rayleigh Jeans law predicted that black bodies would emit infinite amounts of power, which contradicted the law of conservation of energy. Until one day, your German boy, Max Planck, came in. Now, Max Planck created this something we call Planck's law. And despite how it looks, it's actually very simple. Basically, what it says is that every physical body continuously and spontaneously emits an electromagnetic radiation. And this body is described as the emissive power per unit area per a certain frequency. Now, what Max Planck also theorized is that energy is subdivided into things called Quanta. Quanta is the smallest indivisible discrete packets of energy. Basically, these are like the atoms or the electrons of energy. And these are the smallest way we can subdivide energy into. Scientists before used to think that energy was a continuous flow, but Max Planck said otherwise. The energy within the quanta is described through this equation, which is equal to the Planck's constant times frequency. And Planck's constant is this very tiny number which is equal to 6.626 times 10 raised to negative 34 meters squared kilograms per second. Alongside Planck was none other than Albert Einstein, who was famous and was won a Nobel Prize for his findings in quantum physics and relativity. He theorized that light acted as a particle as well as a wave in certain areas. He called light particles photons. He also came up with what is known as the photoelectric effect. This basically says that light hits matter it releases an energy and brings it to the electron and it excites it so much that it releases itself out into the world and out of the matter. Now, we can explain this further through this equation, which equals E, which is energy, equals Planck's constant times the speed of light over the wavelength. Einstein found that we could learn a lot about light by studying how it reacts with the surroundings. Both the wave theory and the particle theory predict that light will knock electrons out of matter, more specifically, metal but each have a different way of explaining how electrons are ejected. In the wave theory, the waves push the electrons out of the metal by exerting force on it. The intensity of the light is the only thing that matters and not the frequency. Particle theory says otherwise. The way light knocks electrons is by having individual photons hit individual electrons. It transfers the energy and thus knocking out. Think of it just like playing billiards. When you strike the cue ball with your stick, the energy from your hand goes to stick and then the stick into the cue ball and as it's moving really fast, that speed turns into energy and that energy is transferred into the balls that you hit. Though there's a minimum amount of energy required for the electron to pop out, this minimum amount of energy is called the work function and is denoted by W0 or W0. This is the energy that the electron needs to escape the metal. In addition to that, the electron needs more kinetic energy in order to shoot outwards. Therefore, the photon's energy must be equal to that of the work function 
plus the maximum amount of kinetic energy needed for it to start moving. The other scientists are rolling in in this new and exciting field and came up with more theories. One of those was Louis de Broglie, who theorized that if light can behave like a wave and a particle, why can't matter? Turns out your boy was right. The application of the wave-particle duality allowed us to understand the behavior of particles more accurately. We can equate the momentum of an electron within matter to Planck's constant over the wavelength, just like the energy equation earlier. So, if every object exhibits waves, then why can't I see like the huge waves being emitted by my friends or other objects? Well, let's break it down this way. We know that momentum is equal to the mass of an object times its speed or velocity. And from our equation earlier, we know that we can find the wavelength by dividing Planck's constant by the momentum. Let's take for example a person running at 10 meters per second and weighs about 80 kilograms. Why are you running? From here, we can see that the waves emitted by this single person is very, very, very tiny. Exactly this number right here. We don't have any instruments to measure wavelengths that tiny, but we now know that even you are a wave. Really cool to think about how we are emitting our very own waves. I don't even need to go to the beach anymore to catch some gnarly waves. Scientists chose to focus on the particle theory of light and matter to analyze them more precisely. As we scale all the way down to the subatomic level, our intuitive understanding of how things work, like light and matter, don't really apply there. That's why we focus on how light and matter act as a particle. Our mind just can't grasp the subatomic world that we cannot see and the mind-boggling physics that entail with it. The discovery of Planck's law and how light travels in discrete packets, as well as light and matter being both a wave and a particle, is what we call quantum mechanics. Tune in next time as we get into the nit and grit of quantum mechanics as we discuss entanglement and a very, very curious can. Watch out for my other video, which will be about the time I spent in my research study group about quantum optics and how I dealt with it without even knowing anything about the topic. Pakas, smart particles. Till next time.